Hello again, great to be with you. I hope you're having a good day. Um, we're currently studying Paul's letter to the church in Galatia. Uh, so we are today going to look at Galatians chapter 2. And we're just going to have a, a few verses. We're going to look at 14 to 16. Um, Paul writes this. When I saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas, that's Peter, in front of them all, you are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? We who are Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus so that we may be be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because by the works of the law no one will be justified. You know, our world is changing rapidly, and the truth is that it's probably changing faster now than it ever has previously. Our communication systems are faster, our media works more quickly, and the trends and fashions as a result spread more rapidly. News for today for us today, will be news on the other side of the world in just hours. With all of that comes <clears throat> the never-ending influence of ideas and other cultures, um, different practices. The temptation for us might be to retreat back into the safety of the things that we know and the things that we trust, because those things bring us security. But when we do that, we don't move forwards. We remain just where we are, sheltering under our um, umbrella of familiar things. And that can be a problem. Paul had accused Peter and others of reverting to familiar Jewish customs and practices when they knew that Jesus had brought about fundamental change on the cross that were for everyone, not just for the Jewish people. So Paul had to challenge them. As an example, they were insisting that new Christians should be circumcised when Paul argued that that was now unnecessary, it was an obsolete practice because of what Jesus had done on the cross. In the end, <clears throat> the most important thing for any of us, whether it was in Paul's time or now, is the work of Jesus and the cross. In our ever-changing world of influence and, um, in our, <laughs> sorry, in our ever-changing world, influence and change must be measured by the same standard. We should ask, where is Jesus in this? What would Jesus do in this situation? Or how would he react to this new influence? So I want to encourage you today to think about the influences that have a bearing on your life. Where do you see Jesus in them? Where do you hear his voice? How do you see him reacting to the things that are going on around you? And how do you see that backed up in scripture? They're good things to ponder. And the, the right way to find the right influences um, to guide you. So let's, let's pray. Lord Jesus, help us to always keep you at the centre of life. Help us, Lord, to keep our focus on you as we keep moving forwards. Let us not stagnate under the things that have just become familiar. Bless us to understand your word and to live it out as an example to the rest of the world in all that we do. We ask these things for the glory of your kingdom and in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day.